hi you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is Kendall and today I'm gonna be giving you guys all of my spooky horror you know recommendations these are books that literally will you know scare you and they're not like fall oh, they're like horror you know they're they're the scary stuff that's hiding under your bed So what I'm going to do basically is some of these I have read, some of these I haven't read. Um, pretty much, well I've read a few. I've read almost, I think I've read half of them. I've read about half of these. So um, half of them I will have read, half of them I won't have read. I'm going to tell you guys what the Goodreads ratings are for these. Um, the ones that I have read, what I rated them and yeah we're gonna just get into it and hopefully you find stuff that you may like or want to try out this spooky season i have two middle grade ones that i'm going to go over real quick i have read both of these and i really enjoyed these um the first one is the haunting of Avalyn jones by phil hicks i know some people say Aveline, i say Avalyn. i don't know why um, this is rated a 4.26 on Goodreads. I gave this one a four star rating. Peanut butter is like causing chaos this morning. So if the camera looks like it's moving around some, it's her. But anyway, the synopsis on the back of this one's pretty short. So I'm just going to read it out. Um, it says, Avon loves reading ghost stories. So a dreary half term becomes more exciting when she discovers a spooky old book. Not only are the stories spine tingling, but it belonged to a girl called Primrose Pemberthy, who vanished mysteriously, never to be seen again. Intrigued, Avalon decides to investigate Primrose's disappearance with some help from her new friend Harold. Now someone or something is stirring and it's looking for Avalon. This one was really good. First off, can we appreciate how cute the cover is? I am like obsessed with it. Um, this reads really quickly for, you know, I mean, it's a middle grade book but as you can see like the writing in it is pretty big and there's not a lot of words on the pages compared to regular books you know but these this is a series I think there are three books in the series at the moment um but Aveline this I believe takes place in England if I'm not mistaken um which I always love because it gives more of the atmospheric vibes of a book. But Avalyn is new. She is trying, you know, to figure out stuff with Primrose once she finds this book from a used bookstore. And she shouldn't have picked up this book. It's very creepy. This one has like, I don't know, this one to me was scary for a middle grade. I was like, if I would have read this when I was younger, it probably would have given me nightmares. Um, you get like, you see ghosts and then all of a sudden you don't see ghosts. And it's something where like her aunt, you know, she's living with her aunt. And it's just crazy to me. Like I don't want to give too much away because it is a short book. And it goes, you know, pretty much into all the drama once it happens. But this one, I'm telling you, if you enjoy reading middle grade, um, especially like spooky middle grade, and I really think you'll enjoy this one because it is very spooky to me. The next one, I have read this probably like three or four times in my life. And it is Deep and Dark and Dangerous by Mary Downing Hahn. I have like the original cover, I believe. And now it has like a baby doll head or something. It's, it's weird on the cover. But this one got a 4.21 on... Um, Goodreads and I would probably give this like five stars. I really enjoyed it um, But the first time I read it was like Elementary school probably and usually I was not one to pick up like scary books But I I did this one is a little bit more Like the words there are a lot more words um, the print is smaller so you get more words per page So this one is gonna take you a little bit longer to read than like Aveline Jones would but again, this one has a pretty short synopsis, so I'm just going to read it to you. It says, just before summer begins, 13-year-old Allie finds an old photograph. She recognizes the two children. One's her mother, the other her Aunt Dulcie. But who was the third person, the one who's been torn out of the picture? Allie will have two months to figure it out since she's been in the summer with her aunt and her cousin in the same house her mom and aunt used to visit when they were kids. 
Then Allie meets Sissy. Sissy is mean, spiteful, and determined to ruin Allie's summer. Sissy also has a secret. Could it have something to do with the old photo? Allie is dying to find out. Though if she's not careful, that's exactly what ha might happen to her. Die, that is. Um, this book was creepy. I, it's been a while since I read it. So I don't remember like a lot, a lot about it, but I do know it's taking place, you know, during the summer and she's going out visiting and she's just trying to have a good summer, but she's also trying to figure out what is up with this photograph and who is this third girl. There are secrets that her mom and her aunt are keeping from her. There are secrets that Sissy has that she's trying to figure out. You get the water element, which just always creeps me out because I feel like a lot of people have a fear of drowning and that's always scary to think about. And I feel like this instills that fear in you with how they're on the water sometimes. So, um, but this one is more like eerie and you're trying to figure out what's going on. So this is very like suspenseful and very thrilling for a middle grade novel, I feel like, because I mean, sometimes in my opinion, it's easier for us like adults to figure out what is happening in the middle grade novel when it's thrilling or suspenseful but this one was kind of like huh I mean she does a really good job of writing Mary Downing Hahn does where I mean she kind of I feel like she could write a really good adult thriller novel so I highly recommend picking this up if you want something that's like eerie and creepy and maybe you want to instill that water fear that you have so the next one is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, and this one got a 3.98 rating on Goodreads. I gave it a 5 star. This is probably one of my favorite books that I have read this year, if not my favorite. I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is like one of my favorite covers because it looks like a old VHS tape, and I just really like it. Um, again, we have a short synopsis on the back of this book, so I'm going to read that out to you guys. High school sophomores Abby and Gretchen have been best friends since fourth grade, but after an evening of skinny dipping goes disastrously wrong, Gretchen begins to act different. She's moody, she's irritable, and bizarre incidents keep happening whenever she's nearby. Abby's investigation leads her to some startling discoveries, and by the time their story reaches its terrifying conclusion, the fate of Abby and Gretchen will be determined by a single question. Is their friendship powerful enough to beat the devil? Like an unholy hybrid of Beaches and the Exorcist, my best friend's exorcism blends teen angst, adolescent drama, unspeakable horrors, and a mix of 80s pop songs into a pulse-pounding supernatural thriller. So this one has like so many things that I enjoy in it. It has 80s references. Um, including actors, songs, movies, and pop culture references, stuff like that. Every chapter is named after a song title, you know, party all the time, parents just don't understand. I was trying to find one that Jenny 8675309, everybody knows that song, right? Um, but it's very creepy too, like they do a lot of, Grady Hendrix does a good job of making you laugh but also making you kind of grossed out at the same time. I mean, when you think of possession and exorcisms, I always think of gross things. Uh, there are bugs, there are, you know, smells, and he does a great job at, you know, painting that picture of, you know, creepiness, but also it's hilarious the way that he writes. And some of the characters, the exorcist in this book, like the guy who was performing the exorcism is hilarious. He's one of my favorite characters because it's just ridiculous the kind of person he is and the fact that he's performing an exorcism makes that even more ridiculous. So I really enjoyed this one and this also has a really good underlying message to you and to its audience about friendship and things like that. Um, so if you, if you like your horror with a little underlying humor and an underlying message, then I really think you'll like this one. Uh, also fun fact, if you didn't already know, this is going to be adapted to a movie or I believe it's a movie. Um, I don't think it's a TV show on Amazon Prime or Prime Video. So it comes out on September 30th. So you still have time to read this before it comes out. If you are one of those people who enjoy reading it before you see it. The next book is The Last House on Needless Street by Katriana or Katrina, however you say her name, Ward. Uh, this one was very creepy. I remember there was one part in this book where I literally had to 
close it and I was like I can't read it right now because I'm literally gonna cry um, I was a little nervous I also read this book when I was by myself in like dog sitting and I was at a house that I was not you know I'm like I'm there all the time it's where I work so I'm there all the time but it's different when you're by yourself and you're staying the night yeah I wasn't comfortable <laughs> But anyway, this got a 3.87 on Goodreads, and I gave this a 5 star. Um, I'm kind of actually shocked that it's that low on, well, I mean, that's not low. That's almost a 4 star rating, but that's low to me um, on Goodreads. So, yeah, I'm shocked about that. But, again, we have another very short synopsis, so I'm just going to read this to you. Um, it says, in a boarded up house on a dead end street at the edge of the wild Washington woods lives a family of three. A teenage girl who isn't allowed outside, not after last time. A man who drinks alone in front of his TV, trying to ignore the gaps in his memory. And a house cat who loves napping and reading the Bible. An unspeakable secret binds them together, but when a new neighbor moves in next door, what is buried among the birch trees may come back to haunt them all. The Last House on Needless Street is an immersive and shocking journey that will keep you guessing until the last page. Um, if, if this helps at all, like some of the people that have um, blurbed this book are Stephen King, Sarah Penborough, Joe Hill, you have T. Kingfisher, Paul Tremblay. Yeah, you have a lot of people. Adam Neville, like these people you know have set the right like set the bar sometimes for horror in some of their novels and they're blurbing this book saying that they enjoy it this book you are going to go into this and you are going to be so confused and not know what in the world is happening but that's the best part of this book i'm telling you you go in and i'm sitting here you i'm coming up with all these theories while i was reading it you know i buddy read this with olivia and we're going back and forth trying to figure out what is happening we had no idea we didn't know what was going on you know you have a talking cat you have this teenage girl but there's things that are happening that aren't making sense and what you find out at the end is truly very unbelievable. Um, I think a lot of people either love or hate this book because some people figure out what is going on before, you know, the end or whatever. And But in my opinion, I don't think that would ruin the book for me personally because it's so interesting. Um, I did, like, figure out at a certain point... Um, I mean, it was one of my theories, but I did figure out before I got to near the end, I did figure out what was going on, but it still was so unbelievably good how the writing style was, and I just feel like maybe I'm just a huge fan of her writing or something, but, you know, it's just, you're going back and forth some, a little bit of between timelines, and you're going back and forth between characters, and they're seeing different things, and th different things are happening to them than are happening to the other characters, if that makes sense. I feel like I tripped up on my words there a little bit, but this book is creepy, this book is eerie, uh, there are parts that literally scared the bejesus out of me, so I feel like this is a really good horror novel to read, especially if you are trying to get into horror, because this is also another book that has kind of a deeper underlying meaning to it, and I feel like if you want to get something, you know, a message or anything like that out of the books you read, and you want to give horror a try, I feel like this one is a good one to go with. This next one I feel like I really don't even have to tell you guys about, but I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about it in case you haven't heard of it. But it is The Shining by Stephen King. Ignore my Barnes & Noble sticker um, on this one. But this one got a 4.25 rating on Goodreads. It's a 5 star for me. I really enjoy it. I want to reread it again because I haven't read Dr. Sleep, which is kind of a book that goes along with The Shining. Um... So yeah, I really am interested in that, but I'm going to read you guys the synopsis because we are just having short synopsis on these horror books apparently. The Overlook Hotel claimed the most beautiful physical setting of any resort in the world, but Jack Torrance, the new winter caretaker, his wife Wendy, and their five-year-old son Danny saw much more than its splendor. Jack saw the Overlook as an opportunity, a desperate way back from failure and despair. Wendy saw this lonely sanctuary as a frail chance to preserve their family, and Danny Danny, who was blessed or cursed with a shining, precognitive gift, saw visions hideously beyond the comprehension of a small boy. He sensed the evil cold within the Overlook's 110 empty rooms, an evil that was waiting just for them. The Shining is a classic work of horror fiction from Stephen King, the undisputed master of the genre. Uh, yeah, I would say so. I 
there's not much that I read. Stephen King's not really my cup of tea, but I do understand, you know, the uh, why people call him the king of horror. I understand that completely. I enjoy the movies that are based off of his books. Uh, I just haven't really gotten into many of his books so far. I haven't found one that I'm like dying to read besides like The Shining and Doctor Sleep and 112263, which is kind of different. But anyway, so you have Jack who is the father in the family and he's a writer and he offers up his family to take care of this hotel called the Overlook. You know, it has many rooms. They're going to be the only ones there in the winter. They're going to be taking care of it. They can, you know, all of that good stuff. Um, and Jack is, you know, he is troubled. We'll put it that way. I'm not going to say more. He's troubled. Um, but you have Wendy, who he's married to. That's his wife. And she feels like this is going to be good for their family. It's just going to be them. They're going to be surrounded by nobody else taking care of this hotel. They're not going to have to leave. Things like that. Like, she feels like this is going to be a good opportunity to restore that family bonding. And then you have Danny, the little boy. And he just... He feels things in extremes, in my opinion. I'll put it that way. Uh, but there, you know, there's this shining that these that Danny has and I'm not going to go into a lot because if you don't know much about this book which I feel like most people do but if you don't know much about it um it goes more into detail of the shining and all that this entails but I really this is like one of the scariest movies I had seen for a long time before I found other movies but it scared me to death when I was younger um it is creepy. It is eerie. You get to see things. I highly recommend watching the movie after this. They did a really good job of interpreting the book into a movie. Um, but this book, I mean, this has all the creepiness. You have a secluded hotel, a one family in the hotel. You know, there's a kid. For me, if you add a kid or like an older person, um, it makes me scared. I don't like when kids are going through scary stuff I don't like when old people are going through scary stuff okay the next books that I have um, are books that I have not read yet but these are ones that are high up on my list to get to um, this fall for like horror reads and stuff like that so I'm gonna show you guys those now the first one is the butcher's blessing by Ruth Gilligan this is set in Ireland I believe yeah Set in the gothic wilds of Ireland, The Butcher's Blessing is a haunting and unforgettable thriller brimming, brimming with secrecy, tradition, and superstition. Um, so I'm very excited about this. I don't remember. It's been a while since I picked this up. I was trying to remember when it was published. So it was published in 2020. So I probably picked it up around then. So I've had it on my shelf for about two years now. So this one has a 3.9 star rating on Goodreads. I believe this one takes place in the early 90s in Ireland, but it's very it's a little bit confusing to understand um, without reading you guys the synopsis, so I'm going to try and explain it the best way I know how. So there are these seven men who get together. Um, do they get together? I don't, I don't think they get together like any specific time. They just get together every day, I believe. And so there's seven men and they perform these cattle slaughters, which sounds very, like, I feel like this is going to be very descriptive and gory in that aspect. But um, I know that one of the characters name is Una and her dad is one of the butchers and yeah, I think it's going to go deeper into what actually goes on during these cattle slaughters that these men perform. Um, you also have this photographer who is part of the story. Um, his name is Ronan, and he's kind of, he's curious about these butchers and what they do and their purpose. So he kind of follows them and documents um, their practices. Um, but they're like... A few different characters that they mention in the synopsis, like Una, her mother, they mention her. Um, they also mention this um, man named Fionn who doesn't believe in the butchers. And then his son's name is Davy. And he is like, I've, 
very caught up in the butchers and you know he kind of loves them in a way but I think this is a fable that is ha that actually they have in Ireland and this story is kind of surrounding that um, so you get the 1996 aspect and the present day aspect of it as well so it kind of is a dual timeline as well but this one I'm expecting to be pretty dark pretty gruesome and kind of it's going to be like reading a horror movie in a way. I can just picture certain things when they're talking about it, even in the synopsis. So this one I feel like is going to be a good one to pick up. This one is um, one by an author that I'm just really looking forward to reading and getting more into her books. And it is the book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I've heard so many good things about this book. This book is rated 3.84 stars on Goodreads, but it I love the cover. It is drawing me in because it looks like, I don't know, it just looks really cool to me. So the story is, the background story takes place in 1977 and you have these two men who are, um, I think they're shot. Yeah, they're murdered with the same gun. So they were shot and you know they have notes left behind on them and everybody is suspecting a woman and there's this woman who gets caught and um well she doesn't really get caught she gets she looks like the most like she's the one who they think did it she's the most suspicious out of the suspects that they have and it's called the lady killer murders and um she basically ends up getting acquitted and released and she just goes and hides in her mansion and i think she was just you know I mean, that's a lot for somebody to come after you if you didn't murder somebody. But I don't know if she did or not. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So you have Shay. You flash forward to 2017 with Shay. And Shay is a receptionist full time, but she also has this um, blog that she does uh, called The Book of Cold Cases. So she comes across Beth's story about getting caught and all of that stuff for the lady killer murders and she reaches out to Beth and is like hey do you want to do an interview and you know I don't think she expected a yes but she ended up saying yes to Shay so then Beth uh, welcomes Shay to her mansion to come and do her interview but Shay starts seeing weird things happening she swears that she sees a ghost things are not where they were stuff is just freaky there okay but they Shay is determined to get the story she wants the truth she wants to know what went on but things are just not right in this mansion and yeah it sounds creepy it sounds good I am so ready I've heard so many good things about this one of my good friends Elizabeth said that she loved loved this book so I am ready for all the horror stuff to be brought out in this Okay, the next one I'm not going to go too much into detail because when I did my, um, what's it called? When I did my book haul, I did haul this one and it is Hidden Pictures by Jason Rucklick. And I went into more detail a little bit about what it entails, but I feel like this one's high up on a lot of people's radar as well. It has a 4.26 rating on goodreads but the synopsis for this one's not too long so i'm just going to read that so you guys get an idea of what it's about if you haven't heard of it so it says fresh out of rehab mallory quinn takes a job in the affluent suburb of springbrook new jersey as a babysitter for ted and caroline maxwell she is to look after their five-year-old son teddy mallory immediately loves this new job she lives in the maxwell's pool house goes on nightly runs and has the stability she craves and she sincerely bonds with teddy a sweet shy boy who is never without a sketchbook and pencil his drawings are the usual fare trees rabbits balloons but one day he draws something different a man in a forest dragging a woman's life body. As the days pass, Teddy's artwork becomes more sinister and his stick figures evolve into more complex lifelike sketches well beyond the ability of any five-year-old. Mallory begins to suspect these are glimpses of an unsolved murder from long ago, perhaps relayed by a supernatural force lingering in the forest behind the Maxwell's house. With help from a handsome landscaper and an eccentric neighbor, Mallory sets out to decipher the images and save Teddy while coming to terms with the tragedy in her own past before it's too late. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, 
Lauren loves this book, Elizabeth loves this book. There are so many people who are behind the like images and the storyline. So I feel like the images are gonna add to the creepy aspect of it because I've already seen some of the images just by flipping through the book and they were a little creepy. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I would be taking this kid to an exorcist or a therapist or throwing the kid away. I'm just saying. Okay, this one isn't necessarily a book that I want to read this fall, but it is an author that I want to read this fall. So I'm just going to use this book as an example because it's one of the ones I have for her. And this one was rated 3.81 stars on Goodreads and it is The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. Um, this one I probably, I mean, I might read it, but it'll be closer towards november because i i mean the winter aspect of it may just be something i want to read during winter time i don't know but if you don't really mind the atmosphere in like how your books are um that doesn't like bother you like that's not what you go off of if you want to read them this one might be a good one for you because i have heard great things about it and jennifer mcmahon um i feel like is kind of the queen of horror in a way uh but again we have a kind of short synopsis so i'll just read this out to you guys instead of trying to explain a book I haven't read yet. It says, Some secrets never die. West Hall, Vermont has always been a town of strange disappearances and old legends. The most mysterious is that of Sarah Harrison Shea, who in 1908 was found dead in the field behind her house just months after the tragic death of her daughter. Now in the present day, 19-year-old Ruthie lives in Sarah's farmhouse with her mother Alice and her younger sister Fawn. Alice has always insisted that they live off the grid, a decision that has weighty consequences when Ruthie wakes up one morning to find that Alice has vanished. In her search for clues, she is startled to find a copy of Sarah Harrison Shea's diary hidden beneath the floorboards of her mother's bedroom. As Ruthie gets sucked into the historical mystery, she discovers that she's not the only person looking for someone they've lost, but she may be the only one who can stop history from repeating itself. So this one, I feel like, again, is one of those that may have like a deeper meaning to it, but also has that creepy, eerie aspect as well. I know that she's written, written other stuff like The Burning Town or something like that, and she's wrote, written The Children on the Hill, which I um, know that Olivia really likes, and I think she rated that one like four or five stars if I'm not mistaken. But I'm really excited to get into her novels because she has written so many, and they... I mean, a lot of them people still come in for, at, I know, at different bookstores and stuff. So, I feel like she's a really good horror author, and I just am very excited to try her out. This next one has a 3.68 rating on Goodreads, and this is one that I've had on my shelves for forever, and if I do not get to it this year, somebody come after me, okay? I'm just saying. And it is Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This one is supposed to be, you know, dark. It's Mexican Gothic. Gothic is in the title. It's supposed to be dark, you know, creepy, eerie. Um, this is another one that has a short synopsis. So let me read that to you guys. He is trying to poison me. You must come for me, Nomi. You have to save me. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin, Nomi Tabata heads to High Palace, a distant house in the Mexican countryside, unsure what she will find. Nomi is an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous debutante more suited to cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing. But she's also tough, smart, and not afraid, not of her cousin's new English husband, a stranger who is both menacing and luring, not of his father, the ancient patriarch who seems fascinated by Nomi, and not even of the house itself, which begins to invade Na Nomi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Nomi's only ally in this inhospitable place is the family's youngest son, but he too may be hiding something dark. For there are many secrets behind the walls of High Palace, as Nomi discovers when she begins to unearth stories of violence and madness. Mesmerized by this terrifying yet seductive world, Nomi may soon find it impossible to save her cousin, or even escape this in uh, I can't say this word, enigmatic house. I got it. Okay. So I think I'm really going to enjoy this one. It's going to be, I feel like, a lot of suspense, and maybe not as much horror, but creepiness and you know it says it's seductive and you know there's like a house that is creepy i always really like haunted houses like haunted mansions things like that because you get the element of fear already instilled when you go into a house knowing it's you know haunted um but everybody has always talked about like this is just thrilling and somebody said absolutely terrifying and i just feel like 
I need a good haunted house story and this one sounds right up my alley also my friend Naomi recommends this one for Hispanic Heritage Month and I think that that's a really great idea um, because again you're in the spooky season you're getting in the mood for these horror novels or spooky reads and this one's a perfect one that way you get some Hispanic appreciation mixed in with your horror as well so best of both worlds. I hope that you guys were able to find some things or I was able to recommend you guys some things that maybe you hadn't seen before or things that seem interesting to you. You just want to know a little bit more about them but yeah I think all of these books are really good. The ones that I've read personally I loved and I think that I'm going to thoroughly enjoy the rest of them that I recommended and yeah that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.